let us continue in this process of crossing the threshold together. I'd like to share with you about Teshuva. Teshuva. Can you hear the creative command in the word? Teshuva is a is a creative command in my view in this moment that crosses the threshold from the inner sounding to the outer consciousness. Let go, detach, return, regenerate, restore, answer, come back, remember, draw it in, Teshuv appears in the Torah uh, 1,050 times using many of these meanings. So I'd like to very quickly share a lot of things. <laughs> and this sharing represents to me a uh, healing and a reunion of my ancestral and family traditions with the many lineages of spiritual teachings I've come to love since then. And it's also very timely because this month, these weeks before the eve of October 2nd, this is the number one spiritual practice for millions of Jews across this earth. Um, this practice of Teshuva asks us to reflect upon where we've been, where we are, where we're going, and means to return. So, so Rosh Hashanah is the is what's coming up on the eve of October 2nd. And far more than just the new year, um, it represents the birth of the universe, the anniversary of the birth of the whole universe, <laughs> the one song of creation. And I remember in uh, my experiences of Rosh Hashanah, of the prayer of, may you be the head and not the tail. So Rosh means head. Rosh Hashanah means the head of the new. So it means like, how do we get our heads into a place where we can create something beautiful in the new year? That's Teshuvah. So traditionally, Teshuvah um, represents uh, a five-step process, which is recognition, regret, confession, resolution, and reparation. <laughs> That's a lot there. Um, so recognizing that things may have happened that are not in the right place, or that there are negativity happening in some way, and feeling sincere remorse, verbally acknowledging that in some way, and making a commitment not to repeat it, and healing it in some way. Um, that's the traditional view. And I'd also like to share with you some of the view of Kabbalah in this. So in the Kabbalah, it takes it another step from being uh, uh, something moral or ethical or, or just strategic for this time to something that's metaphysical and uh, more evolutionary in spirituality. So in Kabbalah, those 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 mistakes or those errors are a result of our break with the light to no longer that we weren't shining the light. But we can reclaim and restore that light um, through a practice that is like almost like time travel. So I just want to share a little bit about this time travel process of Kabbalah Teshuva. So first you go back in time to a moment of reactivity and experience it, feeling it. And um, when, when they're doing this practice, they're sounding. They're sounding um, one of the 72 names. Um, and this one is Vav He Vav. This connects to living experiential ontology. When I first started studying this years ago with Margaret O'Neill, um, I told her, the Torah was created through a process of sounding. I know that to be true, but I can't explain it. And here it is, in the 72, in 72 names of Kabbalah, they sound 
Vav He Vav, to go back in time. So as you're feeling this pain, um, and feeling that the way that is to, to imagine the consequences of those negative actions at the time, and um, recreating it, and then imagine um, it again, go back to the beginning before it happened, but this time, what your consciousness and your words would have been if you had taken the initiation, practiced restraint, done all those things that you you wished you would have done that caused her, you know, the opposite of whatever caused regret and something more proactive. And doing so with an honest heart spiritually changes prior negative actions. And then for this part, they sound yud lamed yud. Um, and then the last the last phase of teshuva in the Kabbalah is um, that once you've taken that accountability, made a sincere commitment to move forward with new choices, then it's time to forgive. Forgive yourself. Come back to self-love. Come back to self-acceptance. So um, what really what really hits me about this is that teshuva is spiritual time travel. It's where it's a view where the past is not something fixed. It's malleable. And it allows us to transform and to heal and elevate ourselves across time. So Teshuva allows us to travel back and, and transform even the past. Teshuva reconnects with the light and restores spiritual energy from past, present, and future. Teshuva gives the superpower of rewriting the past. Teshuva is an infinite opportunity for restoring that light, for restoration, because it's always available. And Teshuva impacts the future by helping us to reshape the trajectory of our lives. And what I was hesitating on there is that it, it also reclaims lost potential. Like every mistake represents both a missed opportunity and a missed trajectory that could have appeared now. So it restores the lost potential and reclaims that trajectory and what's possible in this moment. So it's powerful, right? Teshuva. Teshuv. Come back. Remember. Remember. 